In this video, I'm gonna teach you how you can go and make your very own aquatic style perfume. So something a little bit like Davidoff, cool water, that kind of thing. At the end of the video, I'm actually gonna give you my skeleton formula for this aquatic style of perfume. And that's something you can go and make yourself or modify it to your own needs. For example, if you like a certain raw material, you can go and add that in there, or you can remove bits which you don't like so much, change around the levels and come up with your very own custom aquatic perfume. Before we get into that, however, I'm gonna go over my top four raw materials for making these aquatic style perfumes. Now, these aren't all essential. You don't find them necessarily in every single aquatic perfume. You could leave some out, and there are a load of other raw materials which you could also put in. For example, there's a load of different synthetic raw materials that have different aquatic smells, and I won't cover them all in this video because there are quite a lot of them and I don't have time, but if you are interested in that, then do leave me a comment because I am thinking of doing a video at some point in the future covering different aquatic synthetics and perfumery. This video is sponsored by Luxeterra, my online store where you can find all of the essential equipment for perfumery. Only good quality and good value for money products make the cut and I use almost all of the products myself when making perfumes for my brand. To browse the full range of products, visit www.lux-terra.co.uk or click the link in the description. Anyway then, what are these four raw materials which I think are some of the most important raw materials for making aquatic perfumes? Well, they are calone, helianal, dihydromersinol, and ambroxan. So then, we'll start with calone. Now, calone is extremely strong, which is why I've got it diluted here to 1%. However, I thought I'd start with this one first because to me, calone is probably the most iconic, um, the most famous, the most standard aquatic molecule that you can get. Now. The stuff's extremely strong, so just by opening the cap here, even though it's diluted to 1%, I can already smell the waft has kind of come out of me, and it's this nice kind of calming, uh, fresh, watery smell. If we go and take a scent strip, it smells aquatic, fresh, watery, that kind of thing. I'd say it smells a little bit melon-like. It's got tiny kind of fatty and metallic aspects to it as well. So overall, it's this kind of fresh, kind of watery molecule. Now, this molecule is extremely important in perfumery. Um, this essentially started the whole genre of aquatic perfumes. So this thing was actually discovered in 1966, but it wasn't really used very much by perfumers. They didn't know so much what to do with it, just in small doses here and there until 1991. And in 1991, two very important perfumes were released. One was Calvin Klein's Escape, and the other one was Kenzo's now, these two perfumes made heavy use of this molecule, Calone, and they were essentially these really watery um, aquatic fragrances which had never been done before. These two releases kickstarted a whole new genre in perfumery, the aquatic genre, and countless other aquatic fragrances were made thereafter. Now, one thing to note about Calone is that it is a solid powder in its pure form. So, if you're thinking about buying some to do your own perfumery with, then either buy one that's already been pre diluted to pipette it, or make sure you have a spatula ready to go and weigh it out and make your own dilution. Moving on then, we'll go on to Helianal. So Helianal, if you go and look at its structure, is actually a little bit similar to Calone. If I get the Calone and the Helianal together, you can see that both have this kind of double ring structure. Now, one of the differences between Helianal and Calone is that Helianal is a lot less strong. So for that reason, I've got this Helianal here diluted to 10% instead of the 1%, which I reserve usually for stronger raw materials. It does actually resemble Calone to some degree in the way it smells. Both are very watery, fresh, and have this melon-like smell. However, I would say Helianal has a bit more of this kind of melon smell, and it has a slightly more, let's say, ansi leading facet, something a bit closer to Canthoxal, another synthetic molecule, and it has less of the kind of fatty and metallic aspects to me. Now, the other thing about Helianal is it's a lot weaker, and you especially find this in blends, and that means it usually is something that you can put in a little bit stronger than Calone. Another thing about Helianal is I found it blends really well with Hedione, so whenever you have a fragrance with some Hedione, if you have some Helianal together with it, as long as they both fit for the theme of the perfume, then that can be a really nice combination. Next then, we have Dihydromersinol. Now, this molecule is something that, again, is really widely used in perfumery, and it's often paired with Helianal, Calone, that kind of thing, to make these uh, kind of fresh men's aftershave smelling fragrances. Now again, I've got some here diluted to 10%, and this one is a lot more of a top note, whereas Helianal and Calone, I would say they're mid to base notes, that kind of thing, and they last quite a long time. Dihydromersinol is more of a top to mid note, it doesn't last that long. 
Now this smells very clean and fresh and it's apparently traditionally been used in lime fragrances, citrus fragrances, lily of the valley, that kind of thing. However, since the advent of this aquatic genre, it's frequently been used in those aquatic style fragrances as well. It's really common in men's aftershave and if you smelled much uh, fresh men's aftershave, if you smell this molecule, you will immediately recognize it. In fact, this molecule is one of those aha moments I had in perfumery. When I first smelled it, I suddenly realized, ah, oh, okay, this is how they go and make that kind of smell smell if you know what I mean. So get some of this, it's really useful. Now the only thing about dihydromersinol is that it is uh, something that's been used a lot in cleaning products, shampoos, that kind of thing, um, because it just lends itself well to that say fresh uh, shower gel or that kind of product. And because it's been overused in so many men's aftershaves, I mean cheap ones, and also shampoos, that kind of thing, because it's so widespread. And to be fair, that's because it is quite a beautiful smell, but because it's been so overused and associated with other products, there are now a growing number of people who actually actively dislike this smell because it associates uh, for them with that kind of thing, like cheap men's aftershave, cleaning product shampoo, uh, blah, blah, blah. So I would recommend you get some of this dihydromersinol. I think it's a really important tool in the perfumer's arsenal. And especially when making certain kind of fragrances like these aquatic fragrances, um, I would say it's completely indispensable, but just do be careful when you use it. You don't have to necessarily make it really strong, just a touch can help. Whereas if you overdose it, it can make your perfume reek of that kind of smell, which can put off some people. Um, I think it's one of those things where you just have to use a little bit of nuance and kind of consider if it's the right thing for the situation or not. Finally then, we have Ambroxan. Now, I like to use the Ambrofix variant, but there are quite a lot of different variants of Ambroxan out there, and some people prefer different ones, so you can choose which one you prefer. Now, if you wanna know more about Ambroxan, then definitely watch the video I made on it, because I think that's the best way that I can describe to you um, all the details about Ambroxan but we'll just have a quick smell of it now. And yeah, it's basically this uh, very projecting kind of radiant, um, golden, ambery, slightly marine smell. It's very, I would say, just pleasant and calming, that kind of thing. So at this point, you're probably asking, where's the formula, man? That's all I wanted from this video, just the formula for the perfume. Okay, I'll give you the formula. So in this formula, this is something that you can treat a bit like a perfume base, as I like to call it. You could almost treat this as an accord, which you could make up, say, 50% or so of your perfume formula out of, or you could just even go and use it yourself if you really wanted to. So in this formula, I've dosed Calone actually really strongly. Um, usually you wouldn't dose Calone this strongly, but, you know, this is meant to be a super mega aquatic um, perfume that's just plain old in your face really aquatic so for for this example we could take a bit of liberty and overdose the calone so in the final formula or the total concentration calone is at 0.5 percent which again is really strong for calone if you're looking at it in terms of fragrance concentrate that's five percent calone which is a little bit crazy next we have helianal so this one is dosed a bit more strongly this one is one percent the final formula if you wanna to get to the uh, percent concentrate for any of these, you just multiply it by 10 because I'm using a 10% formula overall. Dihydromersinol, this one was at 0.82%. Um, you can put this a little bit lower or a little bit higher. If you put it more towards 1%, you're really veering into very strong dihydromersinol smell. I find you know, somewhere a little bit lower, around 0.5% uh, in the formula can usually be a pretty good level for dihydromersinol. Even then, it will still be noticeable. Then we have the Ambrofix, and in this formula, it's at 0.34% in the final formula. I think this is a little bit on the strong side, but again, we are really going for this strong aquatic perfume, and this stuff will kind of give you that longevity, give you that projection, give you that kind of classic um, aftershave-y kind of smell. So, you know what, for this situation, I think it's okay. Then we have some other things that I added. So Hedione is a big one, actually, it's the biggest thing in this formula, and I put Hedione at 4%. And I think, well, really, Hedione is just the perfect thing to build up most of the structure here. And that's because Hedione has this big kind of uh, radiant, diffusive kind of smell, and it's really got these citrus aspects to it. And that is kind of the reason that I'm using so much of it here, because um, I've also got lemon oil. Now, in general, 
I think that citrus works really well with aquatic perfumes. Now you could use any citrus, but I like to use uh, lemon oil. I think that's my favorite one for this kind of fresh aquatic perfume, because when you've got the kind of fresh uh, watery notes, and then you've got the kind of breezy notes, like you've got the Hedione, the Helionelle. I think having some lemon oil, it just makes you think of that nice, uh, fresh kind of zingy Mediterranean, that kind of vibe. But you could go and replace this with orange oil, mandarin, some other kind of citrus in your own experiments if you wanted to. So for me, the Hedione really, um, its citrus aspects blend nicely with this lemon, this Helionelle, and overall we've got this kind of arc of like citrus notes into kind of transparent notes like the Hedione, the Ambroxan, and then the uh, fresh aquatic notes like the Helionelle and the Calum. Then I've also added a little bit of timber silk, and timber silk is a woody amber note, so the amber side of the timber silk I think blends quite nicely with the ambroxan, and it also goes quite nicely with hedion. What it really does is, again, it adds a bit more structure, it just pads out the perfume a bit, it makes it project well, and I just think the general smell of the timber silk really suits this kind of composition. And then finally, I've added a little bit of ethylene brassolate, and this is a musk, and the main reason for adding this is to uh, have something else in the dry down, because at the moment we've only really got calone that's going to be a very prominent note right at the end, so I thought we could support this with a little bit of musk. However, I don't like to use these kind of uh, strong, powdery, cloying musks, which you can get, things like, uh, let's say, muscanone, um, ambretolide, uh, velvione, that kind of thing. I don't like to use those in these fresh aquatic perfumes because for me those are more like comforting and kind of fuzzy, whereas for this kind of fresher perfume you want something that's a lot cleaner, a lot more neutral. So I find ethylene bracelet is a pretty good musk for that. You could probably use other things as well, for example you could try uh, edenolide potentially, um, you could try helvetolide could be another good one. So yeah, that uh, ethylene bracelet is really there for the dry down. Okay, so then what does the formula smell like? So I've got it here, 10%, so it's kind of like an eau de toilette concentration. I've got some on the sand strip. Now, I quite like the smell. To me, this is just the kind of, as I said at the start of the video, the kind of canonical or skeleton formula, the kind of starting point I would use for an aquatic style of perfume. To me, it's got a really, really fresh, kind of watery, juicy note, which just jumps out of you. And that really is the main character and theme of this perfume. And because we've got such high doses on the Calone and the Helianal, the Dihydromersin, all that kind of thing, that really takes over because they're quite strong notes. Now, if you did want an aquatic style perfume, but you actually wanted to make it um, more of a composition that involves other things, you really have a lot of room to tone all of these things down in this formula. I just put them quite strong because I really wanted to give you an example of a kind of, um, you know, this is a strongly aquatic perfume. Now, what you could do is go and use this formula as a perfume base, I would call it. And instead of using this as your whole formula, you could go and use this formula as say a third of your formula or half of your formula, and then put in loads of other stuff to fill the gaps. By doing that, i.e. making space for all these other ingredients, you're actually compressing down uh, the amounts of all of the ingredients in this perfume base. So say you were going to use this as a perfume base, then everything would be less strong as a result of that. So for example, say you use this as only half of your perfume, this formula, and then you went and added some other stuff. The level of Calone, the level of Helionelle, the level of Dihydromersonol, all of those strongly aquatic things um, would be half of the level that they are on its own. So that's another reason that I've allowed them to be so strong. And I did say dihydromersonol was an aquatic note. It's not really an aquatic note. I would probably call it an aromatic note. It's something um, similar to things like terpenes, lavender, rosemary in my categorization. Um, but for this video, we're calling it an, let's not say an aquatic note, but I'm calling it a um, useful for aquatics note, right? and just blends well with them. So you can smell the dihydromersonol here, you can smell the calone helional complex, and the hedione and timber silk, uh, timber silk just the version of Ice V Super that I'm using, provide this uh, lovely kind of radiant, uh, velvety, um, lifting, um, slightly citrus from the hedione, this kind of sparkling effect, the sparkling's probably more from the hedione, and then the lemon oil as well. It's not something you really notice, you don't get a lemony smell, but the way it sits in this formula, it just, um, I would say, harmonizes really nicely with that hedione to provide this uh, sunny, fresh kind of feeling. 
and also the watery notes seem to almost uh, go with the kind of lemony notes because you know lemon's got this kind of like juiciness to it and it kind of all melts together into this uh, juicy fresh feeling and the ambroxan in there again this is not something that you can specifically smell itself but this is something that you can notice the kind of effect of the way that it kind of makes the whole perfume just kind of jump out at you and kind of smell it from across the room. And finally, that ethylene bracelet, that musk, again, that's not something you really pick up, especially straight away, because you've got a lot of other loud ingredients, things like the, um, the actual aquatics themselves and the dihydromersonol, but the ethylene bracinate does help to kind of just fill out some of the gaps. And more importantly, when you have the dry down, so after quite a long time, if you leave this for a few days on the scent strip, then that really supports um, the remnants of the other notes into not smelling just kind of like, well, them on their own, but it actually just helps bind them together into a bit more of a perfume-y-like smell. So yeah, there you have it. That is my basic skeleton aquatic perfume base slash perfume, however you want to use it. Feel free to go and make this formula yourself. Try it out. Hopefully you learn something from it and hopefully you can find it useful. If you want more formulas like this, things for perfume bases or even accords, then definitely check out the other videos on my channel because I've got a lot of other videos like this where I give you my formulas for things. And if you like this kind of video, then definitely like and subscribe because if you do that, then YouTube is more likely to put more of these videos that I make in the future out to you so you see them. So thank you very much for watching the video and I hope you have a lovely week. I'll see you next time.